Yasmin's Yes, also known as SB 967, redefines how colleges and universities investigate rape and sex assault. Just saying no means no is not enough. You know, some, pe some guys might take, you know, silence as yes, which is not acceptable. Under this law, both students must give consent before sexual activity and while sober. They are numbers few have been willing to confront openly. In a given calendar year, nearly one in 20 college women will be the victim of a completed or attempted rape. Ten percent of women in a survey of black colleges report being sexually assaulted. And between 80 to 90 percent of sexual assaults at colleges involve acquaintances, not strangers. A new California law, Yes Means Yes, is designed to change and improve how authorities investigate such crime. But will it improve the situation, or is it something that needs to be addressed with a dose of common sense? Welcome to Midpoint. Certified life and relationship coach, expert in teaching parents and kids how to date defensively, she's the teen dating mechanic. Lisa Jander joins us today. Lisa, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me back, Ed. Absolute pleasure. California Governor Jerry Brown signed this law into, signed this into law, I should say. Here's basically what the yes means, yes means for those who don't know. The practical sense. A rape can be deemed to have occurred if those engaged in sex fail to state affirmatively that they did indeed want to engage in the act. As we look right now at some numbers on the screens as far as approval or disapproval of the law, it is wildly approved by Democrats, independents, Republicans. Everybody thinks this is a great idea. From your perception here, is this a good idea or are we missing something here? You know, I'm not really sure what this was trying to accomplish, honestly. Um, I'm not sure it changed anything. It changed the verbiage. but. Um, you know, there's so many loopholes, so many interpretations, so many ways around this that I'm not really sure it's going to change much, honestly. What are we talking about here, an educational issue or a political issue? It's it's not a political issue, and the amount of money that we spend in the, the resources for getting this bill passed, if that had gone into education instead, we would probably be a lot better off. Uh, and I'm not just talking about education in the schools, because you know that's gr a great place to get an education. But where are the parents educating their kids about this stuff? It's happening so much sooner. The culture is promoting it, and it's really kind of a disgrace in the state of California what is promoted in the public schools as well. All right, say that again because you've just touched on something that I've gotten into a lot of trouble with when I get into discourses such as this, and it comes down to the parents. Does this not still speak to sooner or later? You have to get down to the people who are home, the people who take these people when they're young, when they're in their teens, and be able to teach them that no means no, yes means yes, however you want to put it, but that teaching should be instilled in someone before they get to the college level. Absolutely, Ed. That's exactly right. And I don't know what's happening, but, you know, parents are really abdicating to the schools to teach everything or the culture. These kids are definitely getting an education. And if they learn something or see something, uh, you know, in the locker next, next to them in middle school, they're going to want some answers. And if they can't come to their parents, if they haven't established that authority with their parents, and when I say authority, I mean just respecting their parents as somebody they can go to, they're going to Google it. They're going to get the app. They're going to get the um, Good to Go app and, and really promote for themselves this sexual activity that is completely inappropriate at these young ages. What does this teach us then about perhaps even teaching sex education in the middle school level, at a much younger level? Because there are some people who will say, I do not want my child learning about sex education from an educator, yet at the same time, they're not willing to teach their child outside of school what it all means. Some people say, you got to have it in the schools simply because of that. What's the answer? Well, you know, that is, that's the ongoing problem. In the 1930s, uh, driver's ed was mandated in the schools because parents weren't teaching their kids how to drive because they really didn't have the tools or the education themselves. And unfortunately, we have done the same thing. And now we're allowing the schools to teach. And I think very few, I would say very, very few parents actually go on their state school curriculum standards website and understand what is being taught because it's so different state to state. And if you understand what is being taught and whether or not you can opt out, that's really a critical thing. How much influence do you really have over your kids? And how much are you willing to give up to the schools to say, well, you know, you go ahead and teach them. 
I know this comes down again to what many people say is the need for abstinence, at least when you're younger. Of course, we understand that. But Lisa, I know you've heard these arguments before. There are parents who will say, you can't stop that because of what happens at the schools. There's social pressures, there's moral pressures, there's things going on in peer groups. We can't stop it. Okay, so answer that then. If we're talking about it, and I know that, I believe you're an, ab uh, you're an advocate of that, correct? Uh, as far Okay, so how yeah. do we then get to that point and how do you stop it? How do you teach that? Well, okay, if we think of it from a, from a car perspective, just as an example, we put our kids through driver's ed to keep them safe, responsible drivers. We teach them offensive and defensive driving. I can't stop the drunk driver from T-boning my daughter, but I can minimize the risk by making sure she understands the rules of the road and doesn't end up hitting a tree on her own. So we can't avoid all accidents. What we can do is mitigate and minimize the risk by really staying engaged and involved. If you look at how much social media is influencing our kids and how much exposure these kids have, it's, we, you know, we're setting our kids up for failure. So it's so important from a very, very early age to stay engaged and it's hard work. I'm not saying it's easy. It's really difficult. And so to make sure you have to stay in the process all the way through and understand social media, understand what Tinder is, understand what Instagram and Snapchat really are all about. And that way, you can stay informed and really save your kid from the accidents that are literally just waiting to happen. All right, I got about 90 seconds left here. Let's bring this back up then to the college side of things where a lot of this bill was meant for. What do we do now? You're in college, can't go back, can't reteach, other than yes means yes or no means no. What's the alternative then? Because it is a problem. There are women being sexually assaulted every day at every college across America. Right, and I think again, just changing the verbiage from no to yes really is just a shift in, in verbiage is all. Uh, I think it's really important in colleges, they should be uh, mandated, and, and I say mandated meaning encouraged in whatever way, incentivized to really understand the consequences of their actions. Uh, you know, it's typically the girls that are that are the ones that are the victim, but it's really putting a lot of guilt and a lot of um, it's scary for the guys as well. So we really need to educate in college in more so than even middle school and high school because they have the freedom to do that. So what is consent and do you really want to put yourself at risk that way? Lisa Jander, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks so much for joining us and we will do it again. Thanks, Ed. All right, later on this hour, what not to offer with your pizza delivery? That comes along in Outland. And after the break, what the candidates are staying away from in their debates and what the numbers tell us about missing meetings. That's all right here on Midpoint.